Wow, I tell you what, he, he made me sound better than I am, I tell you that. Uh, my kids won't tell me, they won't say that I'm fun loving, because they always call me grumpy pants. Come on, grumpy pants, laugh, smile. But, you know, it's an honor. I, I've been thinking about what I was going to say, and I've worked for the NFL Network for the last five years, and I've seen it from afar. Being on the stage is a whirlwind. It's definitely an honor. It's more than in putting on the jacket and seeing your bust there. It's, it's about being a part of a team that is the elite team of pro football. I'm very honored and I humbly accept it. But I first, I want to thank my Lord Jesus Christ. He's my savior. He died for my sins and my salvation, and you know, really without him, I would not be here. He believed in me, but I didn't believe in myself. I mean, I lived in this world for a long time, and I, I truly thank him for guiding me for so long and keeping me safe, even when I didn't realize it was him. I really thank him, and really without his mercy, without his love, without his compassion for me as a, as a person, as a human being, as one of his children, I wouldn't be here. So I say thank you, Jesus. I want to thank the voters who have who put me in this class of 09 and to really experience this wonderful opportunity. It's absolutely outstanding. To the Hall of Fame staffers, you guys and you women are amazing. Since February, you guys have treated us with class and dignity and honor, and you've made it extremely special for me and my family. I will be back in Canton as much as I can. I say thank you. And congratulations to the other inductees, to Bruce Smith, who's going to be coming up, Randall McDaniel, Mr. Wilson, congratulations to Bullet Bob Hayes and his family, congratulations to Derek Thomas and his family, congratulations. I think it's a wonderful class, I really do, but I'm more honored to be in this class because I think these men are good people. I think when they get out of football, when you got to know Derek Thomas, he was a good guy. I never got to meet Bob Hayes, but listening to everybody speak about him, he was a good man. So I'm honored to be in the 09 class with good men. You know, and I stand up here in front of you as an individual, but nothing alone has ever been done good or excuse me, nothing great has ever been done alone. An English clergyman once said, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of a continent, a part of the main. What he's talking about, he's talking about the body of Christ working together. But also what he's talking about is that we're all a part of a team in some capacity throughout our lives. We are all a piece of the puzzle. We are not the puzzle itself. When we realize that, we're better people. In my life, I'm here today to thank all the individuals who sacrifice of themselves to put me here. There's so many people who have, won't get recognized, and I think it's my obligation to give them thanks. And I'm going to start with a great man who passed away years ago. 16 years ago, matter of fact. James Allen Woodson, my father. He was a man of few words. When he spoke, you had to listen. I mean, he taught me how to work hard. We lived in a small town. He worked multiple jobs to give us everything we had. The one thing he really taught me is, don't take this life too serious. You'll stretch yourself out. But he also taught me to work hard, stay humble, never take yourself too seriously also. 
Dad, I never told you how much I learned from you as a father, and how proud I am to call you my dad. Thank you. My dad had a wife. Her name is Linda Joe. Sitting right over there, my mother. And she's kind of the complete opposite of my dad. My dad didn't worry about anything. My mom worried about everything. And she worried about everybody she met, from being our, you know, our, our den mother and Boy Scouts, to taking us to swim practice every day, to taking us to school. She taught us as a family to be compassionate and love, and really what she taught me is how much family truly means to you. I think, for, I think sometimes we take the people in our households for granted. And one thing she taught me is not to take them for granted. Tell them that you love them, you never know when they're gonna be gone. So I love your mom, thank you for teaching me that. I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest boy of, of three. I say only in age, they would disagree. But my brother Joe, Jay, he's the oldest. My brother Jamie, and we call him James Allen Woodson II, nicknamed Jaws. You know, I, I truly appreciate you guys. You know, you guys taught me a lot in life. Growing up, you guys took up for me when I did wrong. I used to do things in the park down at the end of the street and run home and say, man, that dude trying to beat me up. And they would run down the street and they'd get in a fight with him. Even though I did wrong. So I say, thank you guys. I have not told you how much I love you, how much you mean to me, and everything you've ever done for me. Thank you very much. You know, I, I grew up in a small town in the 1960s and 70s in a biracial relationship. And it, it taught me a lot. I think it taught me early in life that people will judge you by your skin color, not the content of your character. And, you know, this society wants us to choose what you are. So many times, are you black? Are you white? You know, are you Democrat? Are you Republican? But remember one thing, God made us all of one blood and one spirit. <laughs> you people who have mixed marriages, tell your kids <clears throat> they do not have to choose what side they're on. You know, we, we always want to choose, but we don't have to choose. God made you what you are. Remember that. You know, I, I grew up in a small town in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I think it was a blessing for me to grow up in a small town. I love Fort Wayne, a great place to grow up. You know, and it, I, think it, I think it kept me rooted in reality, honestly. Um, I, I think it taught me what was truly real to me and was important to me as a, as a man and as a kid growing up. And I really want to thank Fort Wayne for accepting me and embracing me throughout my lifetime, throughout my career, and accepting my family while we were there in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and why they still are there in Fort Wayne for who we were as people. You know, and if I'm going to talk about Fort Wayne, I got to talk about the people who live there and who've influenced me throughout my lifetime. And the first man, he's a good man. His name is Dave Rohde. He's a my, that's my guy. That's my guy over there. He was my first ever coach. He really taught me how to love football. And really I started playing football because my brothers played. 
but he taught me how to play football. He made it fun and he made it exciting for me to come back the following year. And this guy got married that same year, a couple weeks later, matter of fact, my family had an emergency, they had to go to Vegas. He let me stay with him, him and his beautiful wife, Katie, stay in their home. I broke his helicopter the first week. I apologize, coach. I still owe you a helicopter, I do. One day I'll give it back to you. But coach, I want you to know one thing. Every time my kids play a sport, I compare all youth coaches to you. To make it fun, to make it enjoyable, to make the kid come back the following year, I think that's what youth coaches are about. Thank you, coach. After I played Powell for three years, I went to Blackhawk Junior High in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And, you know, I think every place you go, you have somebody that can influence you. And this guy, Jim Russo, he was a basketball coach in Fort Wayne. And Jim, I wasn't a good basketball player. Matter of fact, I was so bad, I used to play at halftime on a comedy squad. That's what they called it. I'm telling you, that's what they called it. But, you know, a coach would always give me words of encouragement. He would always tell me to keep fighting, keep getting better. Don't worry about it. Come back out next year. You're going to keep getting better. So I want to say, Coach, thank you very, very much for those kind words of encouragement. I think so many times in society, we fail to realize what one kind word can do to an individual and how it can change their lives forever. So thank you, Coach. After that, after my junior high years, I thought I was big time, like all teenagers do. I went to high school. I went to the best high school in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Snyder High School. I'm glad we got a couple guys, a couple people here. But in Fort Wayne, you know, at Snyder, there was one man who truly influenced me. His name was Jim Grinnell. He passed away years ago. But, you know, we had a football coach, Jim Holly, or excuse me, Mike Holly. And Mike, Mike, he was a tough coach, man. He worked us hard. He yelled at us a lot. So I quit my sophomore year. I quit football. I was like, man, this is too much. I'm out of here. And Coach Grinnell went up to me and said, you can never quit. You go back out. You fight. You love football. You keep doing it. So honestly, without Coach Grinnell coming back to me and influencing me to come back to football, I would not be here today. So I say thank you, Coach Grinnell, for talking me in to not being a quitter. My three years of Snyder High School went, went fast. Then my next family, or really my home away from home, was Purdue University. Go Boilers, that's right, Big Ten. But honestly, you know, Leon Burnett, Ray Sherman, Ron Mims, all the multiple coaches there taught me so much. All the professors taught me so much. They got me ready for the National Football League. But more importantly, they got me ready for life. And I want to thank Purdue University for everything it did for me and my four years of being there. Thank you very much, Purdue. After my four years at Purdue, went quick too. 1987, just like yesterday, April, the draft came around. I get a phone call, Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Rooney family. And I know I saw Mr. Mr. Rooney around here somewhere earlier. And I just wanna say thank you to the Rooney family. Great, great family. Arguably one of the best, the best sporting franchise in all of sports because of the family. I want to say thank you for giving me 10 wonderful years there. To the Steeler Nation, thank you for accepting me, for cheering me on. And after I left, for booing me. No, I'm serious for booing me because, you know, if you cheered me, 
when I put on a Ravens uniform or a Ravens uniform, I don't know if, I think I would have lost a little respect for the Steeler Nation. So I'm glad you booed me, because you should. <laughs> but you know, I spent 10 years there in, in Pittsburgh, and man, I had some wonderful coaches. Chuck Knoll, Tony Dungy. You know, and Tony Dungy, I would believe he's gonna be a Hall of Fame coach. I believe he will be here. A guy named Rod Rust, you know, no, a lot of people don't know about him unless you're a New England fan or a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. A defensive genius, a guy that really went above of what he should have done to his players. He set me aside and he, he challenged me as a player to learn more, to be more. He took me into his office and used to break down film of what offenses used to try to do to defenses and how they would try to basically scheme defenses. The green light clicked on about a month later. It was a lot easier to play in the National Football League after that. So I say thank you, Rod Russ, for doing that for me. Five years went by, Chuck Knoll and his staff left, and I got the new group, Bill Cower, you know, outstanding coach. And I got to say thank you to Bill. In 1995, they talk about me coming back from the ACL in 1995 for the Super Bowl, and it would never would have happened if Bill wouldn't have left the spot open for me. There's no coach today, and we have one right here in Dick Duran. You, you know you wouldn't leave a spot open for any player. You, for me, okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> to come back in a season. Once you have an ACL injury, they put you on IR. But Bill, he saw something. What he saw, I don't know. But he gave me a great opportunity to play in the Super Bowl in 95, even though we lost to the Dallas Cowboys. I say thank you to Bill Cowher. Dick LeBeau. Man, I, I hope the voters... Seriously, I hope the voters get it right. First of all, he belongs in as a player. That's the first thing. Secondly, if you don't want to put him as a player, you put him in as a contributor because he did so much for the National Football League as a player and a coach for over 50 years. He deserves it. So the voters are going to get tired of hearing me talk about Dick LeBeau and putting him in the Hall of Fame. Next, Dom Capers. He was also there. Wonderful coaches all in Pittsburgh. But all good things come to an end. After 10 years of Pittsburgh and that storied franchise, I went to another storied franchise, the San Francisco 49ers. And it was, it was amazing going from one storied franchise to the other. And that was Eddie DeBartolo's last year as being the true owner of the 49ers. But I saw in one year what everybody loved about Eddie D. He was a good man. He treated his team like his family. So I want to say thank Eddie and the San Francisco 49ers franchise for taking me and the family for one year and made us feel like its own. Thank you. Right after that, I got a phone call from an old coach that coached in Pittsburgh, Marvin Lewis. He was coaching, he was a defense coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. He called me and told me he's a young, talented football team back on the East Coast that needs some leadership. And I want to thank Marvin for giving me that call because he was absolutely right. I got in there and saw all the talent they had and he just had to learn. But without Art Modell, old school owner, and I hope Again, the voters get this right by putting Art Modell in the Hall of Fame. He belongs there. You know, you can boo him because you disagree with him moving him, but you can't disagree with what he did as an owner. Secondly, we had fun in Baltimore. 2000, arguably one of the best defenses ever to play in the National Football League. And I want to thank the Ray Lewis's, the Shannon Sharps, all the individuals that were there that made my four years in Baltimore rememberable. Ozzie Newsom, thank you. Steve Bouchotti, thank you for the continued support. Raven Nation, and I love you. You know, and I believe it's fitting 
that I ended up as a Raider. I started my football career as a Raider, and I finished my football career as an Oakland Raider. Al Davis and the Oakland Raider organization, I want to say thank you for two years of really letting my childhood dream come true. I always wanted to be a Raider when I was a little bitty kid, putting on that little Power Raider uniform. And I want to say thank you for treating me and my family extremely, extremely well. Thank you, Al. Oh, yeah. Uh, you Steeler fans, you booed me when I was a Raider, too, now. Real bad. <laughs> but I love you anyway. You know, I see it fitting for me as a biracial mutt in life to be a mutt in the National Football League. So I think it's fitting that I played for multiple teams. I enjoyed it. I got something out of every place that I played. And I want to thank the, I want to thank the National Football League for giving me so much in the 17 years that I probably can never repay. Thank you, National Football League. Thank you, the fans across the country for, for that. So I spent 17 years in the National Football League, and that was my extended family. And now I was retired. I was trying to figure out what am I going to do. And I can remember Chuck Noe always saying, get on with your life's work. You have to get on with your life's work. And I was trying to think, well, I'm going I'm to drive my wife crazy for the next year or two and just sit around the house. A couple weeks later, I get a phone call. It's from the NFL Network. And I have to thank the NFL Network for giving me a great opportunity. Steve Bornstein, Eric Weinberger, I want to say thank you very, very much for giving me these last five years, wonderful years, as a matter of fact, and putting up with me when I was pretty awful. My first couple of years, I was pretty bad. I remember my kids going to YouTube, and I hate YouTube, man. I can't stand that thing. <laughs> but it, it said the worst stuttering studio analyst in pro football. <laughs> and I was trying to get Steinbeck out, and I couldn't get it out. It was this, 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 Steinbeck. And that guy kept playing it over, and it felt like a music video. So thank you, kids, for bringing that to my attention. But I really want to thank the NFL Network. They are my extended family. I love them. I'm indebted to them forever. You know, God has gifted me with a great family I have not mentioned yet. But God gave me five beautiful kids, Marika, my oldest, the stubborn one. I know she's a Woodson because she takes after me because I'm stubborn. My oldest son who has a Dr. J hairdo. He's bringing it back. That's all I know. He's bringing it back. My Tia, who's the middle, she's the mother hen of the group. Jairus, the fourth, he's a, a bundle of energy. So, I mean, he's a tough one, but we love him. And we have our caregiver, Namaya, our youngest. I want to say, I am so proud to call you my children. I thank you and I love you. Well, these five kids have to have a mother, and they have a good one. They have a real good one. Nikki Michelle, wonderful woman. She has taught me so much. She's been with me through the good, the bad, and the ugly. A person that really has taught me a lot about compassion and mercy because I was all about truth. I had no compassion and no mercy in me when I first met her. And over the years, over the 17 years, really going over almost 20 years we've been together, I say thank you, I love you with all my heart, and thank you 17 years ago for saying yes. There are three men who influenced my life spiritually. I think there's no accidents to happen in this world. These three men who've done a lot for me. And there's a, there's a phrase I think fits these individuals. What a man believes determines how he lives. And how he lives reveals most clearly what he believes, regardless of what he says. These three men 
They lived it. They talked it. Everything that they said, they did. Everything that they asked me over the years, they did. Eugene Parker, I say thank you. He was my agent for 17 years in the National Football League, but more so a mentor. He always would call me and said, did you answer that phone call yet? Did you answer that phone call yet? Well, Gene, I can tell you I answered the phone call. I appreciate it. And I just want to ask you, do you believe me now? Inside joke. Don't worry about it. Next, Rod Harrison, he's a chaplain over at the Baltimore Ravens. Man, he influenced me greatly. Keep leading me, he was leading me down the right path. Secondly, Napoleon Kaufman. Played at the National Football League, senior pastor at the well, my church family back in Pleasanton, California. I want to say thank you to both of them to keep being positive and doing the right things for us as men of God. As I look back on the teams that I faced and I've been a part over the years, there's one common denominator about all those teams. And that is you have to choose to be a part of a team. You have to choose to live under the rules and the guidelines. If you want that team to function as one, you have to be obedient to the rules and regulation. So I will leave you today to talk about choices or choice. Remember, to choose or, ch or the, excuse me, to choose or the choices you make in our lives will build our destinies that we make. Choices made throughout our lives will also determine our destiny. Matthew 22, 14 it talks about for few are called, for many are chosen. God has given us a gift to choose. It's a power that we normally don't talk about. I leave you today with these thoughts. Choose. Choose to love rather than hate. Choose to create rather than destroy. Choose to persevere rather than quit. Choose to praise rather than gossip. Choose to heal rather than wound. Choose to pray rather than curse. Choose to live rather than die. Choose Jesus Christ over the world. God bless you.